Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets, great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. In this lesson, we will look at setting up Visual Studio Code as the code editor for developing Python nodes in Dynamo. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Of course, there's an editor integrated into this note already when you double click on it. You have this space to put your code in, it's going to do some basic highlighting and sometimes some very basic auto-completion as well. But there's no error checking in terms of Python syntax and it gets much more difficult to manage when you go to the point where your scripts are this long or even more. So instead of this, I usually go to Visual Studio Code, set it up to work with Python developing my Python notes in here and when it's ready I can simply just copy everything there go to here paste it save it and then run it just like any other Python notes I have in Dynamo the benefit is this firstly over here I have better code auto completion or IntelliSense for example if I want to initiate or create a new element collector I can just type in collector equal filter elements collector and as you can see right there I have this auto complete for the element collector to choose and that's it I can just put it in like that whereas if I go to here now and do the same thing nothing comes up I need to remember the exact name and text to use that's why it's much more efficient to code over here and then copy things over to the left hand side later on Secondly, with Visual Studio Code, your Python script here can be checked. When I go to here, to the taskbar, it says here there's no problem. But if I click on it, whatever problem I have with my syntax in terms of Python language will be shown here. That's really useful for me to make sure there's no silly typo before I transfer this code into Dynamo. And thirdly, I can organize my code in here a lot better. Because for example, if I go to here now, I can maybe collapse this for loop. Or if I go to definition, I can collapse this as well. Just make my code a lot more readable, especially when I do something as long as this or even more. So I will show you today quickly how to set up this environment yourself using just a few simple steps. Okay, so the first thing to install is obviously this application called Visual Studio Code. Let me just quickly close it down so we can do this step together. You can just go to any web browser. I'm going to go to Chrome and just type in Visual Studio Code maybe just the word itself here we go and straight away you will see near the top of your results there will be this link here for downloading it just go to here and now I can choose the version for my operating system in my case it's Windows 10 so let's go for this one here it's going to be downloaded here and should be ready in a few seconds Okay, it's here now. I can go and open it. Let's bring it over here now. And really just go over the prompts here. Accept the agreement. Choose where you want to install it. Etc. There are some more options here to choose from. The most important one is this. Add to path. Sometimes this is needed for certain features to work. So make sure you tick this box. You can also select these two other boxes up here. So you have a context menu. Whenever you right click on a supported file, you will have open with code. Just a quick way to open that file in Visual Studio Code really. For now, I will only do next and click on install. I won't do it now because I already have it on my machine. So let me just close this one out. So when the installation has completed, simply launch Visual Studio Code from your start menu. Obviously, on your system, you will see this script I have here. You will likely see this welcome screen here. Next step, we need to install the Python package for Visual Studio Code. It's a way to make Visual Studio Code understand Python as a scripting language. That will enable it to do things like error checking, code completion, and so on. Super easy to do. Just go to here now and choose extensions. You can then go and search for Python here and choose this one there it should be the official one from microsoft with the most number of installs for me i have got it already but in your case there should be an install button there so feel free to click on it now once the installation is completed simply close visual studio code down and then open it back up 
can now understand Python syntax. So if I go now to make a new file and just save it now as a Python file, let's call this test.py. Make sure you change the file type here from txt to Python. This one here. We can now save it. And now I can start coding in Python, really. And we can see as well, we have Python 2.7 here on our system. Keep in mind, this is not the latest Python version. If you go back to your web browser now and search for Python, just the name itself, and then downloads, you will see the latest version here is at the moment 3.9.1. However, it's not yet the version we have here in Dynamo. There's a plan from the Autodesk team to update Dynamo to use this later version, but that's coming in the future. For now, the version we have here is 2.7. That's why I have here the same version or just slightly higher. If somehow on your machine you don't see this one here, that means you haven't got Python installed. Just go back to your browser now. Follow the same steps I just showed, but instead of downloading 3.9, scroll a bit down now and look for the latest version under 2.7. In our case, it's this one, 2.7.17. I can now download this and get the Windows installer. In my case, my Windows is 64 bit, so let's go for this one here. When that's done downloading, just run it now. And of course, I have it already, so you have here things like repair, remove. But in your case, there should only be the option called install. So follow the prompt and make sure Python is also ready on your machine before the next step. For now, let's close it down. Okay, that means I can start coding now in Python here. If I want to make a list like numbers, and then I can do numbers.append to add a new number into there, I can. And as you can see there, as I type, it's auto completing my code for me. And this is how we can code with better performance. So, a pen again, number 2 or 20, here we go. So far, so good. But what about Dynamo? If I try to do the same thing from before, like making a new collector, and use a filtered element collector like this, you see, there's no code auto-completion, simply because this is not a core Python module. It's something we have from the Revit API. And because Python doesn't ship with the Revit API by default, it won't know what's in there. So there's no auto-completion on this kind of thing. The good news is we can easily fix this simply by installing an additional custom library. So just go back to your browser now and search for GitHub. Iron Python stops and the first one there should be the one to look for this is in simple terms just a simple library so we can give to visual studio code and say look in here for any methods regarding other packages that it doesn't have by default such as the revit api the rhino api etc so to get this into our visual studio code simply go to releases and in here we can download the zip file from this when this is downloaded, select to see it in the folder. We can now right click on this one here and choose to extract it. Go to the folder. And in here, there are several different components because this is actually an open source project. You also have in here the original codes that produced the library itself. Anyway, for now, we only want to use the library, not reproducing it. So let's go to release now. And this is a folder we need to copy. Choose copy, and now we can paste it to the folder when you have Python installed. To be honest, you don't really have to move it there. It can be on any folder on your system, as long as you know the path to later on point Visual Studio code to. But for now, I want to keep things neat and tidy, so I will just copy this to my Python install location. In my case, that's under the C drive and then Python 2.7. I can now right click and paste it here. Once you have done this, go back to Visual Studio Code now, and then go to File, Preferences, Settings. Click on the Extensions group, and then choose Python. These are all the custom settings you can change for the Python extension for Visual Studio Code. We can now scroll down and look for Autocomplete Extra Paths, this one here. Underneath this one, you can click on Edit Settings.json. You don't need to know much about JSON to make this work, 
simply pay attention now to two lines. The first one is this line here, Python path. It should point to the location where you have Python installed. In my case, that's C, Python 27, and then python.exe, the same file I have right there. If you don't have this line, which is unlikely, make sure you type it in. The second line to check is this one right here, python.autocomplete.extrapaths. This is where we need to point Visual Studio Code to find the stubs.min folder that we copied just before this step. Now, because I've done this already, I have here C, Python 27, and then Iron Python stub masters, release, stub.min. And you can see here we have autocomplete libraries for things like Rush Shopper, Revit, Rhino, even Tecla if you need it. But that was the old setup I had before. For now, if I want to change to use this new one, this new folder I just copied in this demo, I can simply copy the path from this folder here and type it in there. Of course, within quotes. Now, because this is JSON, it has the slash here as the escape character. That basically means if you do like slash s, it's not really a text, it will do something special. For now, we need to turn this into normal text. So we need to double up these slashes simply by typing in new ones just before them. Like that. And like this. And now that's one single string. Of course, when you have two or more entries in the same variable, in this case, extra paths, you need to separate them somehow. And in our case here, simply a comma will do. And now you see the error is cleared. Anyway, you only need one stop.min path here. Therefore, I will take out this second one here. Simply delete it. And then save this settings.json. Before closing this, however, if you follow the next step and things doesn't work, you can go back here and add in these two extra lines. Essentially, these are for linting, which is a way to minimize interactions when you code. Most of the time, you don't need to mess up with them here. But if you don't see the autocomplete thing in the next step, you can set these two variables to false because these two might hinder the autocomplete feature that we have set up down here. Okay, I will close this one now and restart Visual Studio Code. We can now go back to the test file we had before and see if it's working. I can do filter elements collector and you can see there nothing has happened yet. This is because for autocomplete to work for Dynamo and the Revit API, we also need to reference their libraries in this Python script. Simply go up here and paste in the essential code for referencing libraries. This one here. If you haven't seen these before and don't understand how they work, simply go down to the video description and follow my link there to see either the basic introductory lesson on Python scripting in Dynamo that I have done before, or check out my full online Python scripting for Dynamo course to understand these even more fully. For now, because I have done this, I have imported the correct libraries. If I now go down here again and type in filter, you can see straight away, auto completion is now in action. Here we go, just like that. It works across all the available methods in the Revit API. For example, if I want to move something, I can do element transform utils and then choose to move elements. You can see, however, when I try to tap in a method like move elements here, nothing is auto completed for me because unfortunately, this is not real time code checking. Usually the auto completion only works at the first level. For example, here it knows that I need the filtered element collector object to collect elements from the model. But if I want to filter this further, maybe by category, there's no auto-completion. But anyway, it's still much better than writing things in here in the Python script. Alright, if you want to take your Dynamo and Python scripting skill to the next level, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Also, if you want to fast track your learning, simply go down to the video description and follow the link there to my full online Python scripting for Dynamo course. For now, make sure you have your code editor set up this way and I'll see you in the next lesson.